patient looks at me and is like, you've got to go to the left. And I was like, lady, I know how to check services. What are you talking about? And she was like, you've got to go to the left. And then my friend was like, oh yes, listen, you do. So I said, okay. So I kind of removed my fingers a little bit and went to the left a little more and lo and behold, I found her cervix. Hey guys, it's Gianna, Midwife Faye here. Today I wanted to film my first video for what I want to call midwife moments, which are fun stories, unique, crazy stories of different experiences that I've had with patients, either in labor or just in general patient interactions. Um, and so I want to kind of post these and share these and hear what stories you guys have that are considered unique midwife moments. This one I am calling Woman in Labor with Two Vaginas. That's right, I had experience with a woman in labor with two vaginas. Let's take a listen. So this story comes from my time as a labor and delivery nurse in Orange County. As I mentioned in my intro video, I worked at a really busy hospital in um, Orange County on labor and delivery. I worked night shift. It was fun. We were always moving and shaking. So this particular night, I had two patients of my own who had epidurals. So my main responsibility right now, I was just catching up on charting. So I was sitting and watching the monitors for both of my patients, looking at their baby's heart rates and their contraction activity. And one of my good friends was running around also with her patient. And she was like, Gianna, can you please just watch my patient for a second? I have to run to the bathroom real quick. A little background on nursing report. When a nurse hands report to another nurse, you know, if I'm assuming patient care, we do a full report, full background, patient's medical history, obstetric history, why she's here, etc. But in a situation like this, where my friend was just running to go to the bathroom five, seven minutes, she just gave me a quick report. You know, she said, hey, she's having her second baby. She just got her epidural. She was five centimeters before. The baby's heart rate has looked good. I'll be right back. So I said, okay, sure, I'm sitting here charting, watching my patient's heart tones anyway, let me watch hers too. So she left. So I'm charting away, charting, charting, looking at all of, you know, I'm now watching three strips of fetal heart rates and uterine contractions. And as I'm looking, of course, maybe a minute, maybe two minutes after my friend's gone, her patient's baby's heart rate starts to drop. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I'm waiting a second, waiting a second. All you labor nurses know what I'm talking about. And I was like, oh gosh, I gotta run in there. So I run in there to do the different interventions we usually do at this time. I'm flipping her, I give her some fluids, I put some oxygen on, she was not on Pitocin, so I didn't need to stop that. And kind of the last thing we do if the fetal heart rate persists is we check her cervix. So I went to check her cervix. I get my gloves on, I get her in a position, I check her cervix. And I am doing the exam and I am so confused. While I'm doing the exam, I'm thinking to myself, my friend said she was five centimeters, the baby was low, this is her second baby. Like, where is this cervix? I felt nothing, you guys. Like, I mean, you know, for those of you that have checked cervixes before, I, I can't describe it other than I felt vaginal tissue and I felt kind of like a nub. And I was like, she's not closed, so, what am I missing? Like, what is going on? Meanwhile, the baby's heart rate is still down. Multiple people start to come in the room, including my friend who's her primary nurse. And the patient looks at me and is like, you've got to go to the left. And I was like, lady, I know how to check cervixes. What are you talking about? And she was like, you've got to go to the left. And then my friend was like, oh yes, listen, you do. So I said, okay. So I kind of removed my fingers a little bit and went to the left a little more and lo and behold I found her cervix she was about seven eight centimeters dilated the baby was there the baby recovered you know the doctor came into the room all was fine um, she ended up having a lovely vaginal birth as she did with her first baby but I was like what just happened like I said as a nurse when I'm taking on primary care of a patient I'd receive a full background and history on her, I would have known that for sure. But because I was only being asked to watch her baby's heart rate for about five minutes or so while my patient, I mean my friend went to the bathroom, you know, I didn't know this background on her. So this woman had two vaginas and that in her case did not affect 
her childbearing or um, birth outcomes. So after things had calmed down and we all walked out of the room, made sure everything was safe, obviously, I looked at my friend and I was like, what didn't you tell me what's going on? And she was like, oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to tell you, she has two vaginas. Two vaginas. You forgot to tell me, this lady has two vaginas. What? So a bit of the science geeky background on this is that this patient had something that I didn't know about at the time, but that I now know of as Mullerian anomalies. During normal fetal development, two structures called Mullerian ducts are supposed to fuse together to create the uterus, fallopian tubes, and majority of the vagina. Mullerian anomalies, they're named after a German physiologist, Johannes Muller, um, and what they are is they are anomalies that occur during fetal development. However, when these structures don't fuse normally during fetal development, a woman can experience a different types of Mullerian anomalies. So this means abnormalities in her reproductive structures, either her uterus, her fallopian tubes, her vagina, or more than one. For this particular patient's case, I'm not exactly sure which variation she had. What I do know that I later found out kind of through the rest of that shift was that, again, she has two vaginas, and one kind of ends in a cuff. It ends in a small uterus with the cervix that isn't functional, doesn't um, really serve any reproductive purpose, and the other one goes to her normally functioning cervix and uterus that she was pregnant with, that she had been pregnant with the first time, and that she gave birth out of. Now you're probably scratching your head thinking, oh my gosh, how often does this happen? Um, it's a pretty rare case. So according to Medscape, the prevalence of this is about 4.3% in the general population, about 3.5% in the infertile female population, and about 13 to 14% in the population of women who experience recurrent pregnancy loss. Usually a malarian anomaly is diagnosed at some kind of reproductive juncture, whether the patient has trouble with her periods and cycles being irregular or really painful or um, something like that. Or more commonly it's diagnosed when someone gets pregnant during her ultrasounds or if someone's having trouble getting pregnant. Um, again, this might be part of the workup for infertility or for causes of why pregnancy is, is hard to achieve. As I mentioned before, for this particular patient, it didn't really get in the way of her reproductive life in terms of getting or staying pregnant or having normal births. Um, but again, that does vary depending on the type of Mullerian anomaly and the extent of it. So that was today's uh, midwife moment. Please take a moment to comment down below. Tell me what you think of the story. Tell me if you know anyone that has any kind of uterine or Mullerian anomalies. Um, and share. Share with someone that you think might be interested and might geek out on the science of it as well. Alright, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.